Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to today's edition of the breakfast meeting brought to you by Vetiva Capital Management in partnership with Frontier Africa Reports. On today's agenda, our economist Ibuko Moyeni will be reviewing the recently released inflation figures. Following that, we'll be hearing from our traders and they'll be reviewing the fixed income and equities markets. And then we'll conclude with headlines from across Africa by our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports. Once again, we'd like to remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded and it may be shared with third parties. We're also streaming live on our Vetiva Online Facebook page if you prefer to view or join from that platform. The session is set to last for 30 minutes inclusive of Q&A. And if you have any questions, you can send them in using the chat function available on Zoom. If you're joining us from Facebook, you can make use of the comment section. However, I'll be having a Q&A segment, and if you prefer to speak, you can make use of the raise hand function and you'll be called upon to speak. We'll now be starting off with Ibukun, and he'll be reviewing the recently released inflation figures. Good morning, Ibukun. Good morning, Victoria, and good morning, everyone. So yesterday, the National Bureau of Statistics confirmed that Nigeria is still on the path of its inflation, as headline inflation fell for the fifth time in a row to 17.01%, slightly ahead of our forecast. And this indicates the sustained partial effect of the decision to retain fuel subsidies, as well as the ongoing harvest season and high base effects. So for the second time this year, we saw that all the major indices decelerated. Food inflation fell to 20.3%, thanks to the ongoing harvest season, as well as relatively lower cases of conflict in food producing regions. In some of these states, we hear that internally displaced persons are already, are already resettling, which also contributes to reducing the pressures on food prices. So off to core inflation, core inflation, which measures all other items apart from food, decelerated to 13.41%. Of all indexes, we discovered that the core index is here to show a clear sign of deceleration, as the index has been alternating between higher and lower outcomes within the past three months. However, we believe the last uptick was due to the um, ban of FX on BDCs. So the slowdown in August could actually reflect further resistance to price increases. So going forward, we actually expect headline inflation to trend further downwards. 16.5% in September, as the impact of um, lesser food price pressures feed into the headline figure. We also see food inflation falling below 20% as the resettling of displaced persons as well as the harvest season causes food inflation to moderate. Meanwhile, imported food inflation could actually be, continue to reflect the weakness in the parallel market. However, food in, the domestic food inflation, which is a major driver of the current inflation process, which are seeing, would cause food inflation to moderate further. We actually expect core inflation to rise to 30.5% in September as a result of sustained pressures in the parallel market. So with the squad last week, the CBN decided to reschedule its monetary policy committee meeting to an earlier date, which actually begins today and ends tomorrow. This becomes pertinent as some advanced economists are already sending signals that they could begin to um, reduce asset purchases very soon. This is a move that has actually led to rate hikes in the emerging market. Nonetheless, we expect um, a neutral policy stance to be adopted at the MPC meeting because recovery remains our prime monetary objective. So looking at the fact that on, on the investment side, investors are more concerned with the FX regime than the nominal interest rate environment. So we are more apprehensive about the apex the back stance concerning really the change of operators as it's going to be a decisive meeting to determine whether there'll be further deceleration in the panel market, or whether there will, be, there will be an appreciation. So that sums it up for inflation. Over Thank to you, you Victoria. Very, thank you very much, Ibuko. Um, next up is Symbiat and she'll be reviewing some equities markets. Good morning, Symbiat. Good morning, Victoria, and good morning to everyone. Uh, so like she mentioned, I'll be reviewing the PRVM, Ghana, and the Nigerian equities markets. 
uh, performance yesterday. And starting with BRVM, uh, the composite index maintained its positive momentum, advancing by 34 basis points to close yesterday's session. Uh, this time, the market was lifted by sustained price appreciation in Bernabe, Cordova, and Sico. Uh, then we also saw BICI and Crown um, appreciating on the back of small volumes. Um, overall, uh, so despite the positive close, the market did witness a drop in activity um, from the high level it recorded on Tuesday. Uh, volume declined by 42%, um, while turnover did by 16%. Uh, with market cap at 5.38 trillion CFA. Um, in today's session, we expect market to continue to trade in similar pattern as um, investors continue to cherry pick counters across the board. Um, over in Ghana, uh, the market traded on the muted notes with just seven equities participating in trading and the session um, ending with zero gainers and uh, losers. And of course, uh, the market was lifted by trades in MTN Ghana, like we've been seeing in the past sessions. And uh, this time, the 4.18 million units trade in MTN recorded, um, accounted for 99.76% of the total market volume. Of, and that's approximately 100%. So taking that out, it was a very quiet session yesterday. Uh, going into today, uh, in recent sessions, we have been seeing uh, market, we've seen market act activity dwindle uh, with one or two stocks lifting or depressing the market as um, investors continue to stay on sidelines. Uh, we expect this to filter into today's session. Um, moving on to uh, the Nigerian equities markets. Um, so yesterday we saw the index advance by 12 basis points. Uh, this is the second consecutive positive close after the long bearish run it had. Uh, yesterday's gain was driven by price appreciation encounters like Oando. Oando. Uh, the oil and gas stock gained 6.21% uh, um, after having a few sessions of profit taking. Um, Oniflower, Oniflower as well gained 3.83% with week to date return at 6.97%. Uh, we would see if investors will start to sell down today because that has been the pattern in the last few weeks uh, where sessions of price appreciation at the beginning of the week um, is followed by investors taking profit towards the end of the week. And, and in MTN, uh, MTN also had a decent 1.45% gain due to increased local demand. Uh, speaking on market activity, this remained mixed with volume decreasing by 38%, while turnover improved by 58% to 2.9 billion naira um, on the back of increased demand in large cap names like MTN and uh, Nestle. Uh, notably, both names accounted for 57% of yesterday's market turnover. Um, overall, we have seen renewed interest in some large cap names. Um, so going into today, uh, we expect markets to still trade mixed as uh, we anticipate a similar trading pattern to filter into today. Uh, thank you, and I'll be right for my end. Thank you, Symbiet. Next up is Omorigi, and he'll be reviewing fixed income and currencies. Good morning, Omorigi. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, system liquidity improved significantly yesterday to open at about um, 64.5 billion positive coming from the 94.5 billion negative that was recorded on Tuesday. Um, as a result, interbank rate declined by an average of about um, 98 basis points as OBB and overnight rate closed at 13% and 13.55% respectively. We expect interbank rate to trade at similar levels today and um, barring any significant change in system liquidity. The parallel market, um, lost about um, two naira yesterday to trade at 559 naira to a dollar, where the annual window opened at 412.46 naira to a dollar. The highest trade that was recorded yesterday was um, 415 naira to a dollar, where the closing rate was 412.06 naira to a dollar. Brent and WTI both, both lost about 0.2 percent to open yesterday at to open today at 75.33 and 72.49 dollars per barrel, respectively. The TB's market traded on a very quiet note yesterday, 
as market participants focused on the NTB auction. At the auction, the DMO sold a total of 155.88 billion from an offer of 155.88 billion across the 91, 182, and 364 day papers at um, 2.5, 3.5, and 7.2 percent, respectively. The stock rate remained unchanged across the three um, tenors on offer. In the secondary market, we saw average benchmark rate increase by about 48 basis points to close at about 5.28 percent. The OMO market trade on the muted note yesterday with little interest in across the benchmark of few trades were debt, while average and benchmark rate remained unchanged at 5.96 percent levels. The bonds market trade on a very bearish note yesterday. We observed um, some market players try to sell some of their securities ahead of the NTB auction results. We also witnessed some um, bid rise on the long end of the benchmark curve to between, to between 13.4% at 30.6% levels, while offers on the 2050 maturity settled around 30.5% levels. Trades were majorly consummated on the 2025, 2020, 2036, 2049, and the 2050 maturities. Overall, average benchmark rates increased significantly by about 47 basis points to close yesterday at 12.5%. Um, the euro bond market trade on a muted note yesterday. Um, Access Bank 2026 was finally launched at 6.125% yesterday, and it traded around 5.8% levels. As a result, we witnessed improved demand on Bank 2026, which has a similar maturity profile with Access Bank 2026. And this was basically because of the disparity in rates between them. Um, Access Bank 2026 and Echo Bank 2026, given that um, Echo Bank is currently trading at around 6.9% levels. We also witnessed um, some buy side interest on the Echo Bank 2031 euro bond. For our expectations today, we expect the current and um, bearish sentiment in the bonds market to persist. However, we do not expect the market to trade on a very active note as most players will decide to stay on the sidelines and trade cautiously ahead of the MPC meeting slated for today and tomorrow. At the NPC meeting, we expect the committee to keep all key parameters constant on the back of the declining inflation and the um, gradual uptick in oil prices. It will also be very interesting to see how the committee plans to tackle the persistent decline of the Nera and the parallel market. For the TB's market, we expect it to trade on a bearish note as players trade sentiment of the NTB auction. Um, trade postentively auction sentiment. That concludes this for first income. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Omorage, for that update. We'll now round off with Justina from Frontier Africa Reports, and she'll be giving us some headlines from across Africa. Good morning, Justina. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, everyone. We start here from the Southern African region, where South African lender First Rand says it will end funding for new coal-fired power stations and coal mines and also reach zero, net zero emissions by 2050. In Zimbabwe, the Reserve Bank Governor John Mangudia says the economy is growing faster than all its regional peers, driven by strong agricultural output in 2021, attractive global mineral prices, and massive construction across the country. Malawi's energy regulator is set to announce fuel price hikes. It says it is reviewing current trends of the international market and other economic factors to determine possible increase of petroleum products. In the East African region, Kenya's Energy and Petroleum Regulator, Regulatory Authority has raised fuel prices to a 10-year high. The new fuel price became effective midnight Wednesday. Um, South African, um, no, um, supermarket chain Carrefour is set to take over six stores in Uganda currently operated by South Africa's ShopRite. In the Med exchange in Seychelles, Taka Distilleries says it expects its profit before tax for the period to June to be more than 35%. The increase in profit, according to Taka, is due to the currency gain in 2021 following strengthening of the Seychelles rupee and the reopening of the economy to tourists. In North Africa, the Egyptian Stock Exchange has submitted proposed amendments to the rules of listing and delisting securities in the stock exchange to the Financial Regulatory Authority. The proposed amendments are majorly to open new horizons for growing com um, companies. 
Tunisia's exports went up 8.7% in August to 3.976 billion dinars after posting a decline in July. Meanwhile, Algeria is planning to increase investments in its oil and gas sector by $2.6 billion to $10 billion next year in order to boost production by 8.9 million tons. Now, over here in West Africa and Nigeria, Hi, Justina, we seem to have lost you. Access Bank PLC successfully issued $500 million senior unsecured euro bond with a coupon rate of 6.12%. The other book was overbought by, by $1.6 billion and represents the largest for a Nigerian bank euro bond transaction. MTN Nigeria is set to launch Series 2 bonds of up to 89.999 billion Naira under its 200 billion Naira bond issuance program. Ecobank Cote d'Ivoire reported 18% increase in half-year profit after tax to 14.7 billion CIFA franc. And that's all from us here in, in Frontier Africa reports. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Justina. We have now come to the Q&A segment. If you have any questions, you can send them in using the chat function available on Zoom and the comment section from Facebook. And if you prefer to speak, you can make use of the raise hand function and you'll be called upon to speak. However, while we wait for questions, just a quick announcement. We will be having our West African Capital Market Conference for the year on the 23rd of September. And the theme for the, con for the conference is West Africa capital markets, the journey so far, and the opportunities that lies ahead. It's going to be an exciting one, and we hope to see you in that session. We have one question. It says, good morning, what's your outlook for inflation to the end of the year? So I'll direct this question to our economist, Ibukon, to take. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Um, we actually expected land inflation to continue to trend downwards towards 15% by December 2021. And that is, that is premised on, um, possible intervention of CBN in the FX market. Because given the fact that we've seen some pressures in that market, right, that pressure has not been strong enough to overwhelm the base effect, which is currently driving the current um, deceleration in, in headline inflation. So we expect headline inflation to trend downwards to 15% by December 2021. Thank you very much, Buko. Okay, it looks like we, don't have, we do not have any more questions. It means that we have now come to the end of today's session. On behalf of Vetiva Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we thank you for joining us today and we hope that you have a productive day ahead. Good morning.